Daytona Pi 100. All right, I'm starting the timer as soon as you're done playing. Actually, I'm going to start it now. <gasps> Fuck. So, we're here again, episode 5, actual episode 5 this time, sorry. I was gonna go with, like, volume 3, episode 6. Volume 3, episode 2. Yes. Um, hello, hello, and welcome. welcome it back, is strangers. the week of the 16th. Um, I only say the week of the 16th, because we're recording this on the 16th. It's midnight. Um, I feel like I'm in my cheating on my wife clothes. I came dressed in, like, a hoodie, <laughs> shorts, and sneakers, and I ran over here. Um, about that. Uh, so usually we record at a very certain time, like around five, six o'clock in the evening. Um, but we, there was a little mishap or miscommunication on my part. Was there now? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, so we were, so Brendan and I, uh, we have tickets to see Star Wars Force Unleashed, um, but the marathon version of it. So we're going to watch episode one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven at the end of it. Um, I thought it was t- You tonight. thought wrong. And I was all excited. I was sitting on my couch dressed in my, my Star Wars nerd gear. I had my, uh, my love pants on. Yeah. And, um, I text Brendan, like, where you at, dog? Hit me, you know. <laughs> and then and Brendan bro. was lying down on his bed going, Stefan's texting me. That's weird. What's up, Brody? <laughs> He's like, are you, uh, what time am I meeting up with you guys? And uh, you, I was like, oh, 10 o'clock tomorrow, like 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So I was like, that's kind of a weird question to ask now. So he goes, wait, so you guys are already there? And then that's when it hit me. <laughs> he thought that tonight was the marathon. Yeah. But in fact, he was wrong. <laughs> very, very yeah, wrong. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, we all make mistakes. And, you know. <laughs> it was so funny because I... Um, I had this vision of you being like a kid that's waiting for his dad to take him out to the movies. Like, Dad, are we going to finally go see this movie? And you've been hyped about it all week. Like, it's that Friday, the movie's yeah. released, and you're coming out of school. You've told all your friends your dad's going to take you to go see, like, Jackass or something. And <laughs> We're going to go see Jackass. You know, wait, 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 wait. You know that movie Immortal? Ugh, yes. So my dad picked me up one... Um, I don't know if it was for, I remember if it was Thanksgiving or my birthday, one of the two. And uh, he picked me up and took me to see Immortal. Your with immortal. His, uh, and he did that as a bonding moment so I can get used to his uh, new wife. Uh oh. It's like, bro, I think Immortal came out when I was like in my late 20s. So. <laughs> Wait, your late 20s? Uh, dude, I'm 30 now. I'm old. So that's like, what, two years ago? <laughs> Immortals came out like. I want to say 2009, 2010. Because I remember the, yeah, them running the ads in, in GameStop when I worked there. So, no. god damn. Yeah, I hate my life. Anyway, so... Can, can I say something real quick about no, GameStop? I, me going off on my tangent already. Uh, fucking... <laughs> so, I went to go visit some friends today at a uh, GameStop that I used to work at. And um, they ran an ad for, for, like, their stores. And I guess this is the common ad. But they make their ads now that they believe that their employees are the most incompetent pieces of shit ever. That's because they are. And they're not, I'm dude. Joking with you. I'm joking. Uh, I was about to flip this table over. Um, <laughs> no, and it's, it's sad because I still have a lot of friends that work for the company, and and you know, again, I devoted five years of my life to that place, and for them now to have ads that that make their employees look stupid is just. Oh, are you talking about those ad, the advertisements where they're all like? Oh, well, you're looking for this a, game that's like pew pew pew, yeah, man. And you're like, no, you want the game that's like. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, exactly yeah, that. that. Ad. But that's not the only thing. The Star Wars ad, and then the Call of Duty ad yeah. is terrible. It's Have you seen the that uh, place, man. the Electronics Boutique commercial? No. So Electronic Boutiques in Canada, it's worth. It's a still subsidiary. Um, GameStop. They have the well. This is a long time ago. It's old when uh, Call of Duty came out. <laughs> Had this guy who's there's these two guys come in and like they're like we want the you know Call of Duty blah 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 and the guy goes copy that that's it that's all he says Jesus but, fucking um, Christ it's funny it's <laughs> weird and um if Devin if you're listening out there you do really look like him and he accepts it 
so he knows. Okay. So, I'm okay uh, with that. But if you ever get, a, ever get a chance, look up that commercial. It's kind of funny. Um. Anyway, so hello again. With that being said, and we'll you know we'll talk about GameStop employees later because I've always had that uh spaghetti in my pockets moment with a lot of the female GameStop employees because so a lot of them are really like cute. Uh-oh. And I can never speak to them because I'm uh, too uh-oh. shy. I'm really shy. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shy guy. Trigger warning. Um, <laughs> I know, right? Oh, what? You know, new right, gamer girls? Anyway, so um, let's get into the news to abuse, which is uh, news to uh, kind of make up as we go along. Usually, um, <laughs> usually, guys, I usually make up the show plan and the news to abuse. But this week, like I said, this is like a last minute podcast. We're giving you a peek behind the curtain where (laughs) we literally weren't going to do anything today. I was in bed half asleep watching old NXT matches. And then I was like, fuck it, let's do a podcast. And so now we're doing a podcast at one in the morning. And here's Stefan with your news. (laughs) News to abuse. Um, wow. Um, so anyway, um, by Swanson's. <laughs> so anyway, we put it together kind of hastily. So one thing I wanted to talk about is get into the video game news. Um, video game news. We know Kojima. Um, <gasps> Hideo Kojima. We spoke about him in the last podcast about how him and Konami have been having a bit of a separation. A tiff. And, um, it seems like, uh, word on the street, the internet street is... That Kojima is going to be starting his own studio. He has begun. It has begun. Kojima has left Konami finally, or has legally been allowed to leave. So here's the question: um, You think Kojima is going to create games, or is he going to become the next Afune, Afune or Itagaki, where like, you know, they leave the big company that they created all these games with, and now they're just kind of creating these like minor games that nobody really well. touches on. I think, unlike Inafune, who's kind of not in touch with Western developing, I think that Kuna- Kojima is going to have a much better go at it than Inafune did. He should move to uh, L.A. I'm pretty sure he's going to move to L.A. And then next year's Video Game Awards is going to be like the te- the like announcement trailer for a new series. If not, I wouldn't be shocked if they... If uh, Benicio... Benicio... Guillermo del Toro... <laughs> Benicio del Toro... And... Uh, Oh, Benicio. Oh, fuck, I said it again. Guillermo del Toro and... <laughs> you know what's crazy? I was going to say Guillermo del Toro and Peter Jackson. And oh, my God. Kojima. Imagine if Kojima and Peter Jackson teamed up with del Toro to make a crazy hard game. No, but I think they're going to take that PT concept and they're going to make it into something different. I'm, I'm pretty sure if that's going to be their first thing. But, again, like I said, he's more in touch with the gaming community now. Look at like, his relationship with Jeff, Jeff Keighley. <laughs> that you were dying. Bubble. That you were dying real quick. But look at his relationship with Key League, and he Kojima knows what's up. And if not, he's gonna make one of like the most mind fuckiest games ever. He's gonna come out with a straight fuckboy well, game. Well, now that he's not, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the fuck boys. Um, Metal Gear Fuck Boy. Well, can we do that? Can we make a song that's like shout out to the fuck boys? Mm. Anyway, nah. So there's um. Chew. It's interesting to see what he's gonna be doing. After he's done with the whole um, Metal Gear Solid, now that he's done with the whole Metal Gear Solid thing, uh, what kind of crazy shit he's going to come up with? Because um, I forgot who it was. I want to give credit to this person for having this conversation with me. I think it was Alex. Um, we were talking Shout about out to Kojima, Alex. we were we were talking about uh, Metal Gear Solid as a series. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, if I had to rank like my top three. Um, all-time favorite developers, creators for in the mm-hmm. video game industry, I would put um, Hideo Kojima in the top three. Um, Who and are your top three? If, if Kojima's one, let's not put him in any order. Who are the other two? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I had to pick two others, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I, wa- I For a very long time, I really liked Peter Molyneux until mm. Peter Molyneux. Peter Molyneux started- nuts? Until Peter Peter Molyneux became all the hype machine, where he was just like, "You can literally do anything you want in the world of fable," and then <laughs> ended up being, "You can't do." You anything can do about. it just if you um, imagine. Peter Molyneux is a great de- uh, creator, but Hideo Kojima definitely. Um, after that, 
man, it's hard to say. It's hard to pick. I I'm gonna separate it by western and 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 I guess the far, the far east. I will go for U.S. Oh, Randy Pitchford is mm-hmm. in is in my top three. That Gabe Noel guy that everybody likes. Mm-hmm. Gabe Noel. Um, Gabe Ben. And it's a, it's a toss up between Ken Levine from uh, fucking uh, what do you call it? Well, formerly of Irrational Games, guys that made System Shock and Bioshock and mm-hmm. whatnot. He's pretty he's pretty up there for me. And um, who? That's it. That's pretty much it. I I don't I don't want to say Cliffy B, and I'm not gonna say no, like Peter Moore there. and all those other people because they they really didn't do anything, but. I, I do like those people. In terms of Western, uh, I mean, Eastern, Kojima's pretty tight. 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 The gentleman that, uh, Kazurai. Mm-hmm. Kazurai's up there. And um, I'm trying to think. That's it. I can't really think of anybody else off the top of my head. I um, mean, I, I do go, I do like Suda51. That whole thing is pretty good. Um, but anyway, so uh, next thing. Pause. We can pause for a second. Wait, why? I use the bathroom. Really oh, bad. Brendan. Hiya. All right, guys. So we're going to do a little bit of a new thing here where we're going to take a little bit of a pause because we're having some audio issues. So until we fix that stuff, uh, enjoy the intermission music, guys. X going to give it to you. <laughs> And we're back. And we have some breaking news. As you might have listened to in the last couple minutes of this podcast, we were discussing what Hege- Hegeo. Hegeo. Hegeo Kojima. What Hegeo Kojima. <laughs> what Mr. Kojima-san would be doing next. And He let to- us know. He yeah. told us directly before he made the video. Yeah, he let us know. So <laughs> St- Sony just put out a video with Andrew House kind of like going like... Well, it was in Japanese, but <laughs> along Japanese. the lines of, um, they're announcing a new gentleman who's going to do a Sony exclusive for them, and it was Mr. Kojima, son. Kojima. Which is kind of incredible, because we That's were cool. just talking about if if he's going to go the Inafune route, and he kind of did it. <laughs> he didn't. No, he took the smart route and the high road. Didn't uh, start a Kickstarter for a fucking shitty game that may or may not ever come out. Um, so yeah, that's really that's cool. That's, that's smart. I that is so smart. Very much in anticipation. I think you think he has something ready by E three. Yes, without a doubt. I mean, Kojima's a Kojima. Not only is he brilliant, not only is he um, extremely creative, but he's also very flashy. Very so much is. having something by E three, I'm I'm sure he'll have something. Something that teases I'm with. I'm here to announce a new and game Sony. for Sony Entertainment System. Oh, you know how they'll do it, though. They'll do it like... One more And we thing. have one developer that we'd like to... Uh, that would like to say something here at E3. And then he'd show up in his little his fucking smile. And we'd like... Hero. I have uh, joined PlayStation Sony to make an exclusive game. <laughs> And then he goes, I would like to show you That's what racist. we are working on today. And then they show it, right? Mm-hmm. And at the end, he's going to have that smile. You right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Before anyone goes, oh, you fucking jerk. Did, did you not see the Metal Solid 4 when he showed the thing? He's, you, like, you're you're racist. You're racist, fuck. You're racist. Um, um, hang out. Hey, no, no, that's yeah, that's fantastic. No. It kind of goes up against the last five minutes of what we talked about, but I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see he's doing. Let's see both because <laughs> a Sony's lacking in the exclusive department. Well, I mean, Sony's a good company now. I mean, PlayStation Three was like me, but they, well, they they're did getting the smart a lot thing. better. Uh, they kind of didn't put out any first party titles this holiday season with the exclusion of uh, Uncharted because I don't I don't count that because it's collection. Yeah, it's a but complete. they kind of. They left it open for next year, which, you know, next year, they're going to have a lot of fucking exclusives to be playable. Yeah, they are. Which is, which is smart, because wh- I, I like their strategy of partnering up with third-party developers and kind of being like, oh, you can play Battle Star Wars Battlefront. It's going to be better on PlayStation. Or Destiny, better on PlayStation. And they kind of built on those streams while, while they let their studios kind of handle all this 
plethora of first party entertainment we shall get next year. And this Kojima thing is going to be quite exciting. Oh yeah, uh, I'm excited. Hopefully anyway, he so doesn't take like six years, but no, he won't. Uh, hopefully. Nope. Anyway, so uh, from there, we also have um, one tiny bit of video game news to talk about. On top of that, um, one. <laughs> on top of that one, a uh, certain Street Fighter is going to be in a certain tournament. Mm. Yeah, that was uh, weird. Yeah, I didn't having, expect that announcement. I, mean, I didn't expect it either. I mean, we all know everyone's waiting for uh, Tekken Cross Street Fighter, which I was just about to say. Do, is that because of that? The fact that they never made that game? It could be. I mean, no, they're going to make it. I'm a hundred percent sure that game's ever coming out. He, um, oh, I forgot his name already. Um, not Takeshi. Uh, I forgot his name. But um, he's been talking about it for like, he's like, no, no, no the project's still more than alive. It's it going to be done. Like blah, 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 blah. Because they haven't said much. They've been working more on DOA. But he, he's, he's trying to reassure people that it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't, but here's the thing, I, I don't see, I feel like they're, now it's all their resources are going there. to Tekken, they're putting some resources into that Pokemon fighting game. Mm-hmm. I've seen Poke- more stuff about these games than I have of... You know why? Because, and I'm, I'm actually, Hirata, there we go, Hirata. Um, Hirata. I'm actually going to co- uh, quote hey, Pal- him. Um, he actually did say that he doesn't just want to make the game. Like, he doesn't just want to make Tekken Cross Street Fighter. He wa- he knows that both fans on both sides are expecting a lot. So he wants to make the game as good as it possibly can be. And I kind of feel like the new Tekken and Polken, if you will, uh, are tests. They're kind of going to be like the test runs for how this is going to work. Because now we have Akuma in this whole new system, this whole new graphics engine, this whole new everything. And this is going to be our first real taste at a Street Fighter character with Tekken mechanics. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you've seen the trailer um, where they show a little bit of Akuma. Mm-hmm. He looks broken as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he looks really broken. Just like kind of the um, the Tekken characters in Street Fighter Cross Tekken were also kind of a little broken. Uh, it seems like the Street Fighter characters are going to be quite fun to play in uh, the te- the world of Tekken. No, I... Uh... Mm, I don't know. I I don't see the 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 kind of the need for that game, mm-hmm. especially with Street Fighter Five coming out, and that's kind of going to be a placeholder for uh, as Street Fighter does, kind of hold everybody over until Tekken comes out. And then even when Tekken comes out, Tekken's going to be big in arcades, and mm-hmm. I, I think by that point, it's it's not going to be welcome. Like Street Fighter Tekken didn't sell very well, and especially now, I really don't think that there's a much of a need for that game. I don't know. I, I I think it'll be a nice big surprise uh, whenever it does come out. Anyway, if it ever, so, move it, well, if it ever, <laughs> if it ever comes out. Um. So moving on from that, uh, our next little bit of news. Let's, we're going to transition a little bit from video games. Did we talk about? Transition. I don't remember. This is going to sound weird, but like, did we talk about Bayonetta and? In Smash, we did not talk about Smash oh, okay. Brothers. So today. Before, let's just say that real quick. So Nintendo Direct ended their their weird thing. And uh, obviously they ended on Smash Brothers because that's what it was all about. Please to enjoy it. So uh, Cloud is out. Um, Today. Purchase uh, him. Go buy him. You can get him. You can play him. There's some really good videos out there explaining his mechanics and how he works and how his play style is. Um, But along with that, they also showed, I think, uh, Corrin, if Mm -hmm. if I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, from Fire Emblem. It's going to be in there. And just like with... um, I forgot the character before it, but there's going to be like a two alternate versions of that character, Light um, and a female and a, you know, male. Is she both? And I don't know, because I've seen a lot of pictures from the actual direct. Yeah. And some of them, like he has long hair and, and a more like feminine frame. And then you have one where he has shorter hair with a more masculine frame. So I'm not sure if there is a female male version thing in the game or not. Cool. I don't play Fire Emblem. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and along with that, uh, this is no surprise to anybody who's actually a big fan of Smash Brothers because they had the Smash Brothers poll and uh, where they asked fans who they want to see in Smash Brothers outside of the Nintendo verse. Goku and uh, <laughs> Goku will mess everybody. Up, I'm pretty son. sure that was like number one, and they were like, "Guys, guys, guys, we can't do Goku. <laughs> we can't have Goku, well, guys." So who is your number Stop. two? Um, so Bayonetta <laughs> is in this now. Oh shit! It reminds me of that Family Guy joke. What was it? Um, 
goddamn, it's a dying kid is like, oh, I want to meet, like, uh, Paul McCartney. And like, ooh, we can't do that, but you want to meet Spider-Man? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt. I mean, I, I love mean, the first band. That, that was one of my favorite, 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 favorite games on the 360. Platinum did a really excellent job with Sega. Hmm? Yeah, come on, the 360. Um, yeah. What happened there? <laughs> no, no. I thought was, you were going to spin around and, like, exit just... I was going to try. <laughs> One day I, I did that. I wasn't intent to actually spin nice it through the whole header on. But, amazing. like, um, <laughs> I was just joking with somebody, and I was, like, turning my head, and I tried to turn my head as far as it can go. I had neck pain for a week. And you anyway, got stiff. so... Mm, so... Bayonetta is now in the game. She's going to be released in February alongside Corrin. Um, I never played Bayonetta 2. And I uh, I mean, it's the Bayonetta 2 version, too, with the short hair. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's there. That's going to be in there. And they also released costumes for your Mii Fighter. Nobody cares. But, well, there's actually one costume that I want to talk about just for like a few seconds. Nothing mm-hmm. major. Because uh, it's kind of a slap in the face to all the fans. Ah, slap. It's kind of like a here you go, but sorry. Yes, not sorry kind of a thing. So, uh, Geno, or Geno, however you want to do it, from um, Super Smash, Super Smash, wow, Super Mario Brothers RPG. A lot of people wanted that character to be in Smash Brothers, even from way back when. And there was the, a lot of the fake leak uh, photos out there of, of him being in the game. So... Fans have been asking for him, and when they were coming out with the new one, they asked fans, who do you want to see? And that was, like, one of the number one, along with next to Ridley. And Ridley did get put into the game, not as a playable character. And now Geno is in the game, but not as a playable character, but only as a Wii Fighter costume. <laughs> Nintendo showing its fans how much it loves them. We love you. That's why we're going to re-release the same old Star Fox you've been playing. So, uh, moving on from Nintendo I Direct, because there really wasn't much to say. Did you see that Destiny thing with uh, now you can purchase level ups? Which with is so st- a ridiculous price. Stupid. Look, at, look, look, look. The fun of Destiny is grinding and finding. Destiny? What happened? The fun of Destiny? The fun of Destiny is essentially just grinding, grinding and finding things and trying to look for weapons. It's you you kind of get that spark that shoots you up to level 25, but even that's not fun. When I when I started Taken King in September or when I bought Destiny in September, I kind of didn't use it. I just got rid of the item because it, there was no point. It, it takes away the fun of kind of just playing this game and enjoying it. Yeah, but not for other people because you also have to remember that Destiny is not it, it's oh uh, it's a weird blend destiny is definitely for the hardcore players that enjoy doing the raids and all that stuff the raids don't take very long so it's like hardcore mm-hmm. light so a lot of people like especially Wait, casuals some of those raids take like hours oh yeah some of those raids take a long time i'm talking all oh, i'm comparing it to like world of warcraft raids so cha um but anyway um nerd it is like <laughs> It is like a hardcore light in a way, and a lot of people that are getting into Destiny now especially um, are playing because all of their friends are playing Destiny now, so they want to jump in and play. So like playing through the beginning levels for them is really boring, because that's Mm -hmm. not why they're playing it. They're not playing it because they want to find weapons and you know do all these things and find out what the story is and try out all these different... They don't care about that shit. The only thing they care about is... Doing the the crazy raids that all their friends are doing, so I can see why they have those boosts. I mean, like the boosts are all obviously optional, so if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But the price point on the boost is like ridiculous. I re- yeah, no, I, that's I don't agree with that. It's it's sort of like uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> it just it. I don't see the point. I, re- I also read a statistic today which made me laugh. Uh, Sony spent all this money to kind of get Call of Duty to be like their exclusive, like, to t- trying to get over that upper hand over Microsoft, which yeah. they, if they had that partnership with Activision and that license for such a long time. And they released the numbers, and more people are playing Call of Duty on the Xbox than the PlayStation, which made me laugh. Because I was like, hey, you spent all that money to try to get people to jump ship, and it doesn't seem like it worked. So there's well, that. I mean, I'm just trying to explain it. Like, probably why they're doing it. Uh-huh. I mean, like I said, I, I always believe that you should play a game. Like, if you're going to get a game, play it. Um, in mm-hmm. defense of those people. Mm-hmm. Honestly, in defense of those people. 
Destiny story is pretty fucking shitty. It's it's lackluster. It's just run and gun, which is okay. It's fun to play through. Don't get me wrong. I have I've had some really great moments playing through the story with uh, my friend Chris, but bam, there you, you go. Know, that, it, that's where that's where it's at. It's, yeah, that's where it's at, but not for everybody. You're mostly just playing with they're, friends and yeah, playing but with their friends, friends are like level fifty and like oh I don't know what the level cap is now, but like they're they're really high level and they don't want to go back and. Like, their friends are going to want to play and do all the raids, so... You know, if you weren't there from the get, like, you're kind of... Play some Crucible matches. Get leveled up. That's Crucible what I did. sucks. Anyway. Uh, it does, I but hate it's... Like, a, Here, a competitive here's the thing. multiplayer. There's a... There's a stigma going on in gaming right now. And it's sort of like... It's, it's the fear that Battleborn and, and Randy Pitchford from Gearbox kind of has. Or I, I think is. Just a fear for, for MOBAs and, and all this. A lot of companies are starting to focus now on shipping games with just multiplayer components and totally forgetting about campaigns. With the exception of Star Wars, because again, that's a major, major, major title. I see that tide changing. Look at look at Titanfall. Look at Evolve. Um, again, just look at how the some MOBAs just die. It's, it's again, it's becoming like MMOs. Really wide open MMOs. What was it? Massive multiplayer, blah blah blah. Like, oh, mag. Something with stuff like mag and, and stuff. It, it just doesn't work. I don't think it's ever going to. Because it, you know, it, it's not so much that it doesn't work. It's just I, or at least I don't think that it just. It's not that it doesn't work per se. It's just, I just think that it's building off of something that was good, maybe because it was the first of its kind. Or maybe it was because it was just done, it was just executed really well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those other games try to emulate that same emotion that you felt playing this certain game. Like Evolve, you know, trying to emulate Left 4 Dead, even though it was by the same people. I wouldn't even say it it didn't. Have you played Evolve? A little bit. It's off. There's no like, here, get to the checkpoint. It's like, no, you're a creature and uh, these are the four survivors. Rinse and repeat. And that Mm -hmm. was all. Like, games like Titanfall, like, Titanfall is just a straight multiplayer game, which I've had fun with. But what, what I meant in saying that it doesn't work is that there there's so much, there's so many games to play out there and so little time that I can't be like, oh, I'm going to spend 60 bucks for this game, play for, like, two hours, and then that's it. And then, oh, I'm off to the next big thing. Look at sort of uh, games like, look at Assassin's Creed. Nobody, nobody thought... I know there's two different games, but look at Assassin's Creed after last year, but it was like, oh man, with the botch like release of Unity, there's no way that they were gonna bounce back and fucking do good. And they did. It turned out they focused on the game, just their their, you know, syndicate society, blah blah blah. That did good. I'm pretty sure when Titanfall re when re- Titanfall two comes out, especially now that it's multi platform, they're gonna put a campaign in there. No, oh, maybe. They're- I mean some games are just what they are, unfortunately. It's, um, it's a sad trend that I, that I don't like. It's just sort of like, just give us... We, if we're spending 60 bucks on a game, right? And we can get into this argument and beat a dead horse. But if you're going to get $60 for a game, give us a story. Give us something to compel ourselves. And we're like, holy shit, I want to play more of this. I, I'll, I've had fun in the story. Now I'm going to move to multiplayer. Now I can't wait for DLC. Make me want to keep this game or not regret purchasing these things that, that I do. No, I agree. I, you know, like, I'm a huge... Uh fucking Bloodborne fan. That's ex- I was going to just say and I was going like, to get to that. Like, Bloodborne is th- it's two separate games. Like Bloodborne, Soul, the Souls games in general are two separate games. And a lot of times you create a character that's meant for the single player and then you create a character that's meant for PVP and multiplayer. Um and the DLC usually usually, I'm not going to say always, but the DLC usually for the Soul series is very rich. Like, that experience in itself is worth the price tag of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do wish a lot of other games would follow suit with that and not ignore their their single player so much in favor of just pure multiplayer action. Like, imagine if Jet Grind Radio came out with Jet Grind 3 and it was just like head-to-head head online. Like, um, It'd be like Splatoon. Yeah, like Splatoon. And very little, you know, single player. It's like, what? Think of Mario <laughs> World. Just let's, say, let's say Super Mario World came out, right? Mm-hmm. And you... Oh, you mean Mario Creator? 
No, no, no. I don't, I don't mean. I don't mean Mario Kart. <laughs> Let's just say Super Mario World came out. It's. It's. We're back in '92. Back in '92, we're, we're, we're sitting there and we're playing it, and it's starting, and it's that boom, ba boom, 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 boom. So we're we're sitting there, right? And it's like, oh shit, we played the first world. Cool. I just beat Bowser's Castle. What's next? And then all of a sudden, it's this mini game where you and four of the people are on an island trying to collect as many apples with your Yoshi. And that's it. And that's the game. That's what it feels like games are now. Because, I, you know, sometimes I, I wonder if it's just, like, laziness, if it's just time constraint, or if it's just, like, money constraint. Because there are some, of like, I hate to bring it back to this guy, but Peter Molyneux. Where Peter he, Molyneux. Peter, Peter Molyneux is, is kind of what I would like to believe happens in the game industry, where a guy has a really grand idea for something, and he has, like, for example, with Fable... I forgot which one it was. Legends? Um, not Legends. Uh, it was one of it was one of the, like, sequel ones, like two or three. Um, he actually wanted to have, like, a, a multiplayer system in it where you can come across different adventurers, and you can actually have an adventurer be a, a villain. And that was the basis of Hero I think it was of, three. of Legends. And he couldn't do it. And he, you know, he threw in some, like, other little elements from some of his other ideas. But a lot of times his ideas fell short. And, I, you know, the game got heavy criticism um, because of that. Because a lot of the full fl- the full-fledged ideas that he had were not as fleshed out in the final product as he would have liked. And that's just due to time constraint, money constraint, uh, pressure from the publisher. So I would like to believe... That you know they had a bigger a bigger vision for Evolve or a bigger vision for Titanfall or a bigger vision for whatever game, and it's just uh, the unfortunate symptom of the industry. You know, it's funny is that you said Fable, and I instantly thought of just going looking at you and going, ha ha, just waving like an NPC. <laughs> um, oh, chicken kicker! On on that, oh, I fucking miss that game. I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wait humana, humana. until they re-release them on Xbox oh, One. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to. Oh, I'm, of course. I'm, talking, I'm not even talking about like resed up. I'm talking about like when the backwards compatibility kicks in. The booty copies. When more oh. of it kicks in. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, everyone's like, "Ah, oh, Fable Three sucked." I loved that game. Those games. The are only good. thing I hated about that game was the way you had to like was the ending. That's the only thing I hated. I don't know if it was Fable Three or Two actually. I think it's three though. It was the ending where it's just like either you keep everyone alive but they hate you or everyone dies but you save the world. Um, anyway, so because that's like Peter Molyneux telling you like fuck it, fuck it, suck it, suck it. Like I think either way you're taking when, this load. When three came out, he was already moving on to the connect stuff. Oh god, I can't, this connect was such a bad idea. Anyway, so moving on from that, uh, let's go away from video games for now. We're gonna move on to a topic where you're about to see bipolar, Brendan. We're gonna move on to comics. I know. But we're gonna talk about DC, <laughs> Batman, and Superman. Comics? Are you ready for some comics? Welcome to your comic shop. I'm Brendan. How may I help you? See, that's how. <laughs> See, you know, if Brendan ever does reopen his comic book shop and reopen his dreams, which I hope he does. I want to work for Brendan. Nope. Just so I could be that asshole. Where they walk in and be like, Hi, welcome to Brendan's comic book store. Uh, what do you want? Uh, you're, you're a girl, so you might like Squirrel Girl. Go read that. <laughs> are you new to oh, comics? Oh, oh, oh come, come on. Look, come oh. on. Dude, look, look. Oh, come on. Are, are, come on. Are you, are you buying for your boyfriend? Come on. <laughs> well, you know, you're, I think your boyfriend, if, if he actually reads comics... Would enjoy. It. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You don't go that way. Oh, okay. Um, your girl, your girlfriend. I kid you not. That is an actual <laughs> customer that I had before, and I hate it. I hate tropes, and I don't. I don't even want to get into that discussion. But it's funny because um, uh, Brendan's kind of a trope. I am a trope. The suave nerdy type. I really am not. I wish you I was. You are suave. a suave nerdy type. Don't even what try do you to pretend. That I you're want not you. Suave. I want you to go into detail. You are on this. suave. What? You are you you are uh, you flirt with women and you don't know it. I Every woman don't who has ever met you that at that. least all of our coworkers, eh. they love you. They don't just love you. But they that's not they would flirting. Probably, they would probably give you a hand job. All right, let's let's not <laughs> no 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 no. Let's not alienate people. First of all, what do you mean alienate? Second, secondly, I'm not. 
I don't even. I doubt, doubt that. that with. I'm all just of my joking. Calm down. You don't flirt with people. I'm just saying you're really you're really good with words. I people am, like you. I like to be comfortable. I like to make people comfortable around around me. But you know what's the crazy shit is that I hate people. I, I mean, I don't like. I don't. <laughs> that's very uh, blunt. <laughs> It's Who well, that's because, I just hate people. That's just how I am. Like I'd like some of the people that I'm around at work or outside. If I hang out with you in person, <laughs> you know I like you. If I hang out with you outside of that cube. But So essentially what Brendan is saying is Fuck you if I no, give you a smile and go hi. He's you know, saying <laughs> see what he's saying is he doesn't want you to die. He just doesn't want you to be alive anymore. No, what I'm telling you is that you don't have to go home, but you have to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you gotta go home. Um, but anyway, comics. So comics. So I just it is just something small. Um, because I, I just, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts on it. Actually. Mm-hmm. Um. So, in mid 2016, mm-hmm. we're going to they're going to semi retire. St- starting with issue 50, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, issue 50. So we got uh, Action Comics 50 and Batman number 50. There's a few left of those 52. Like, I would actually... I don't have the numbers in front of me, but of those original 52 titles, I wonder what's left besides the big four yeah. or the big six, uh, big five being Batman, Superman, Action, Detective, and Wonder Woman. I think Flash is still around. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if Green Arrow is going around or they, they changed it. I think Green Arrow's still going around. Um, Titans got rebooted. Um, Swamp Thing and Animal Man, which probably were my two favorite books, got canceled. <laughs> yeah, as you can it's see. So, you said it's so sad. I can feel the pain. Canceled. Go on. Go on. I'm going to okay, actually so, look this up. So, uh, yeah. So, we have uh, Detective Comics number 50. Uh, Detective Comics. You got me saying that. Action Comics number 50. And Batman number 50, where they're going to semi-retire the Jim Gordon... Batman and the uh, new Superman, Bye-bye. and they're gonna bring back Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne as their uh, I love I love saying this word titular titular personas. Sits. Um <laughs> So DC kind of does this a lot, where they make these drastic changes, um, these experimental mm-hmm. changes to see how they go and to see oh no, we just wanna. Try something new, and a lot of times they kind of fall flat on their face when they do that. Uh, they run straight head first into a wall. Mm-hmm. What do you think about this? I, I, I was always really curious to hear your thoughts about that. Okay, get ready. Oh boy, put a pot of coffee on. <laughs> Showbox, engage. Um, I will ask you. I will start it off by asking you this question: How many days has it been since DC's fucked up? <laughs> Oh, that website? <laughs> that website. So, when the New 52 started... Uh, uh, no, okay, the name of the website oh boy, is... here we go. Has DC Comics done something stupid today? <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, it's been seven days since DC Comics did something stupid. Holy shit. See, uh, DC went... DC went eight days without doing something stupid. The longest time on record without DC doing something stupid was 109 days. Oh my god, <laughs> that is amazing. What was uh, what's the last thing they did? I'm trying to ago. look for that right now. I think it was the trailer or uh, DC. Oh shit, here we go. DC will double down on mangled polybag variants for Batman vs Superman month. Uh, is Batman is DC playing Game of Thrones with the Batman creative team? Oh, wow, this is even greater, wiener, stupid. Wiener, wiener. I'm, I'm just going off with the last couple of things DC's yeah. done. Harley Quinn polybag process, destroying variant covers. So, what? So again, to go back to the comic book shop thing, what people in the comic book industry make money on are variant covers. Um, but even the process of getting variant covers are kind of complicated. Yeah. Where you have to order 100 of something to get, you know, to get one variant. Or even in some cases with sketch variants... You have to order two, three hundred or something in order to get one like very super limited exclusive variant. So I know now there's a secret. I'm not gonna say who does it because legally I can't. And this is a serious thing. <laughs> but there are certain companies in the mid in the Midwest, smaller shops that need to survive and can't deal with diamond, so they deal with a certain store in particular, order a couple of the variants. 
and they get discounted prices. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you off mic, but that, that's the process. So now you have these, you know, where we rely on these variants to pay for. So we, what is that? Are you okay? I thought you were having a seizure and you needed to tell me something. I've only had a seizure once and it was terrifying. Uh, oh shit. Well, here's something great. It, no, that's not great. My mom's epileptic, by the way. It's pretty scary. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> Frank Miller has basically nothing to do with Dark Knight 3. We'll leave it at that. So, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is amazing. I love this comic. I love this website. Anyway, so, you know, when you can't, and, and people that are buying $100 variants, they will not put up with the smallest of indentations or anything or dents. That's why usually when you go to a comic shop and you see like a, a kind of trays and boxes full of like discounted variances to variants, they're kind of taking a hit on that as much as they won't like to admit it. But if you can't sell that $200 sketch that you're trying to get rid of, then who else is going to buy it? And then you get fucked on that. Anyway, so... You see, I told you you got to put a pot, uh, pot of coffee on for this one. So when I... Uh, but about Batman and Superman. Superman. When uh, DC first started this new 52, I was on the fence about it. At the time, I was excited because what I thought was going to be fresh new stories about characters that we've seen and loved and we're going to get new kind of variations of him and i was all for that because you know how many times can you have batman beat up somebody from the rogues gallery this time or you know how many times can superman save metropolis and save the world yeah and uh just like is another book that's still going so <laughs> it's just like all right i'm, I'm okay with this and the flashpoint and, and how they dealt with everything i was like all right this makes sense i'm cool with it so then this new kind of continuity starts, and it's just all over the place. You have books can canceled, already aiming for crossovers that make no sense. I don't even, even talk about convergence, because that was just a confusing yeah, clusterfuck was... of poop. So, Nobody ever had anything good to say about convergence. <laughs> it's not, and then, so it's sort of like, okay, so Batman's still going to follow old continuity, but to an extent. And Green Lantern's going to follow the same continuity, but again, to an extent. And it's you're reading two different like continuities to a character because in Justice League it's completely different than how it is in Batman and so on and so forth. And I just didn't like it. And I was just like, okay, I see they fucked up, but shit, we're stuck with this. Here we go. So now with this news that hey, we're gonna go back to old continuity, which they've been kind of hinting at for a long time, retconning this whole thing. Yeah. I kind of went. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, I mean, I have to wait and see. Like, don't get me wrong, Scott Snyder's Batman is still so good. Court of Owls was good. Uh, the death, even Death of the Family was good. Where spoiler, nobody dies, but people were so pissed at that. They were like, "I don't get it. You said that Joker or somebody was gonna die, and he didn't, and nobody did." I like your uh, your stereotypical "I'm in your age" voice. It's not like that. It's, it's usually not like that. Because you know what? There's no proper way to... Because we all get nerdy about something. No, of course. Like even sports, people that like sports. Like, if you've seen somebody bitch about their favorite team, that's as nerdy as you can fucking get. Anyway, so... I love the I love the ending of that, where they, they're they like, you know, we can't kill each other because we need each other. Which is... It seems like always how Batman Joker stories seem to end. Yeah. It's just like, I can't kill you because I need you. So on and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. But... What did die, and a lot of people don't notice this, was his relationships with the Bat family. Mm -hmm. Where they couldn't believe after all this shit that Joker's put them through, all of them. They're like, you're still not going to fuck this guy up? This guy has paralyzed me. This guy's beat the shit out of me with a crowbar. This guy's tortured us, chopped off Alfred's hand, has done everything, and you're going to just fucking let him go? This is ridiculous. We need a break, brother. We need a break. <laughs> And that's what happened, and he lost all his family. Grayson, blah, 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 So, not to go back, I, I think, I only think that they're doing this because they're trying to take a page out of Marvel's book and do the, the solid, the soft reboot. The soft reboot, yeah. For whenever a movie comes out. Which they always... Yeah, that was... That's another thing. It does feel like that, kind of. Where it's like, Batman versus Superman, let's... 
touch 50. up on the books. <laughs> Think about it. Issue 50. I'm going to do some math on this real quick, because actually this is a list that I can I can get to really fast. You can literally hear the gears turning in Brendan's head. Yeah, it's it's not. They're rusted. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. So Batman is up to issue 47, right? 47. We're in December, right? January 48. Uh, February 49, March 50, April 51st. When does Batman Superman come out? When is Batman Superman? I don't fucking remember. May. It comes out in May. I think it comes out in May because right. they moved it because of civil, they actually got afraid of Civil War. So it's sort of, which is sad, which is even sad to even think about. Remember, originally when Marvel, when they announced the date for Batman Superman, Marvel was like, all right, we'll, we'll show our dicks. We're going to put this out right next to you. And everybody was like, uh, are they serious with this? Oh, no. No, no, no. I was fucking wrong. I'm very, 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 very wrong. Batman Superman's coming in March. No. Yeah, Batman Superman's coming in March. So it makes sense. They're self-rebooting it with the movie. I'm really excited about that. And speaking of movies... Transition. Uh, so we're going to speak on movies after this real quick, but uh, we're going to take a short, short break again. Um, we love you. Enjoy the music. Huh? Goodbye. X, go and give it to you. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> and we're back with Capcom versus SNK2. Oh, hey, keep rocking, baby. Um, when okay. you're driving down the road and you look to your right and all you see is a trailer park. That sounds like uh, <laughs> I kind of want to do that. Trailer, trailer, trailer. Um, trailer, watch explosions in my game. No explosions everywhere. From the makers of explosion and manly things comes me. Wow, we just we spent <laughs> like a minute talking about stupid shit. Anyway, Hang so on. we're back, guys. Hello. Hello. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna end this on movies. So a lot of trailers, for some crazy reason, just dropped out of nowhere. It's with been like a bukkake of trailers. Yeah, re- <laughs> <laughs> um, bukkake. So of let's trailers. see if we can <laughs> let's see if we could do them in the right order that they were released in. So nope. let's start with uh, Age of Apocalypse or just Apocalypse. Nope. Um, okay. Let, you know what? That you know what? Let's start. Let's do it that way. We'll we'll say a little bit about each trailer afterwards, but let's just give a quick thumbs up or thumbs down. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right, so we'll, that was the two, first that one? was first one. Okay, fuck my life. So TMNT two thumbs up or thumbs down? <sighs> I'm gonna regretfully say thumbs up. Thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs up, baby, thumbs up. So they got a new um, director, right? Nope, this is the same guy. It's really I thought it's they the changed same guy. Out. Oh nope, fuck me, guy. yes. So fuck. Here's my thing. The turtles still look meh. Megan Fox, I can accept it. Her acting shitty, I can accept it. Ugh, um, I can't. The turtle, <laughs> the turtle van. Oh like, my god! No, like, no, no. I like this. Let's 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 uh, let's think about one thing for a second. Hmm. Just like your toys, it shoots discs <laughs> that well, you have to pick up and you know yeah. put back into it. Yeah, I, I know I know what I'm getting for my niece next year. Oh man, it Pretty looks much. good. Um, I mean, there's a lot niece, of I mean there's a lot of talk about it. Um, so now we have Casey Jones coming in. Yeah, Baxter, played by the played by uh, Stephen Amell guy. The um, I'm okay with that. The brooding arrow, and uh, yeah, we have Baxter played by. I forgot who he's being played by. Tyler Perry. So <laughs> they're Medea. in there. They're all up in this. You know what? Hold up. It is actually Medea. no. <laughs> in 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 defense to him, he was really good in Star Trek for the two minutes he's in it. Yeah, but that's and not saying much. Have you seen I could Gone be good Girl? In Star Trek. Have you seen Gone Girl? No, I did not. He's really good in Gone Girl. That's probably why. So I have my hatred. Pick of the week, Gone so, Girl. So um, yeah, we have Baxter. Um, and Shredder's back. We all thought Shredder was gonna be dead, but no. They he's are back. just babies. They are just babies. <laughs> Anyway, so <laughs> Shredder's <laughs> fuck you. Shredder's back. He's alive somehow. Uh, Shredder's daughter oh, is gonna be all up in this. Mama. And um, there's a there's a big uh, there's a big little fan rumor 
going around about the trailer, which is actually quite uh, substantial. It's pretty interesting. It's what Stefan likes. So in the trailer, theories. you see. No, I hate that shit. Please don't ever, ever, ever talk to me about that. But and anyway, send your fan theories to UptownStrangers uh, at gmail dot com. <laughs> So uh, they have uh, in the trailer they're pulling stuff out of a portal Dimension from another X. world. Yep, the Mansion AX. Spoiler, sorry. The Mansion <laughs> AX, and my life. A lot of people think that the pieces that are coming out they kind of look like jigsaw pieces, which mm-hmm. might lead to the uh, Technodrome. Welcome to the Technodrome. <laughs> It's a go ninja, go which ninja, go. Means that if there is a third film, which everything gets a trilogy nowadays, there will like probably be Krang. How much do you want to bet? Oh, no. I don't even want to say how much you want to bet. Because <laughs> he ain't got no money. How disappointed would you... That's true. I'm broke. I'm broke, son. Uh, how much uh, you want to bet? No, I'm sorry. I keep saying that. How I will not see this Get movie. Get to the point, woman. I will not watch this movie unless there's a new ninja rap. There uh, needs to be. There ain't going to be one. Go, ninja. Go, ninja. That, those go, days are old go, for a reason. Hey, whoa. We're making everything shake That's cause more of, than I do that's in my cause own house. my... Uh, um, my twerking skills. Uh, no, but let's get to the main, 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 main attraction to that fucking trailer. Uh, Sheamus, who, as you know, is uh, current wrestler. B, bro. He's the man. And rock steady. Uh, also, I, I, you know, I brother man of, from Undercover Brother. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> smart brother. No, smart brother. Um, Smart brother. So <laughs> I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line in that that I really love. And he's like, oh, you're doing the whole Mohawk thing. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, because if you've watched wrestling, Seamus doesn't have the Mohawk. Well, he does, oh, but he Seamus. looks stupid. Oh, Seamus. Seamus is running around with a little... He has a little Mohawk on, and he's going to, he's running around trying to find Ninja Turtles. I guess you Why can are there talking turtles? And those aren't the only mutants that put out a trailer this week. Speaking of mutants, we yeah. have Age of Apocalypse. I am Apocalypse. I am I just have, Apocalypse. I just got a great video idea. I'll I am talk scratching to you about my it. underarm like the gross fat man I am right it's now. Fucking sexy man, slower. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, we have eight, we have a uh, Apocalypse X Men mm-hmm. Apocalypse coming out, and we get to see our first glimpse of the cinematic versions, not just like on set photos <sighs> of our four horsemen. Yes, uh, and our original X Men Nightcrawler. Um, Jubilee. It's my favorite mech. Sheen Gray. Fun fact. Uh, Jubilee. No, not Dazzler. Kirk Faulkner. <laughs> oh, the Munich Circus. Uh, <laughs> come on, I love. You love those I movies. fucking love. Wait, let's let's give Alan Cre- coming some credit. He's the fucking best part of X Men Two. You yeah, know that's when, about it. When that movie starts out, that that movie's good. That's a good X Men movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Of the OG trilogy, that is the best movie. Mm-hmm. Come on, you know you you know you're sitting in the theater when he was fucking in that mansion. Wolverine's going to a berserker, and then Colossus got all metally. You're like, oh my metally. god, he's, 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 he's getting all metally. He's getting all metally. the armor skin. <laughs> no, I freaked out. Let me tell you my freak out moment with the X Men trilogy. Um, was with uh, Juggernaut when he bursts his head through. He's like, "Oh, Juggernaut, bitch!" And I'm like, "He said it just like they did in the video." Anyway, so in all seriousness, <laughs> it was X2 it was, was good. Yeah, X2 was a no. Um, so in all seriousness, why don't you like X2? I, w- I want to hear this real quick before um, we go on. So I hate what they did with the characters. What? Um, hmm? What? Everything. The whole movie sucks. The story shit. All the characters are just like cartoonish portrayals of their cartoonish self and 2003 i you're talking to the same guy that doesn't like the original spider-man movie exactly exactly so moving on (laughs) somebody just got real mad i've checked out how's that salt i've checked out for this podcast um so anyway uh Age of apocalypse yeah like i said we get to see the original the we got the four horsemen we have the original x-men and, and we can't forget the way it ends. The bald-headed Xavier. The bald-headed Xavier in his cute little I've gotta, I've gotta blue pressed suit. Um, he looked weird. He looked like a CG version of James McAvoy, which was kind of weird. <laughs> I was like, he kind of looks fake at the end of this trailer. A little bit, but everything looks fake eventually. Um, in the movies, at least. Apocalypse, though. What? Well, Everyone's uh, wondering if he's going to be Ivan Ooze. Ivan what do you Ooze. think? How do you think he looks? Secret of Ooze? Secret of my... He, um... Ooze? He looks...
looks all right. I mean, I can't at this point with as many things as we've gotten. Like I at this point, I don't care what people look like. It's always it seems like that's the first thing people would dissect when when like they release stills or, or trailer or something. It's just yeah. like, oh look at how stupid this person looks. He doesn't look like the character. He doesn't oh look like a spinning image Here, of I'm the gonna guy make I grew a meme with. real quick and be funny and try to win the internet. It's just like <laughs> guys You win an internet. Let it just go at this point. Yeah. Be happy we're getting these properties. Granted we're getting properties of everything, but just let it go. Yeah, but you do want to see, you know, the character represented, like, just how you remember him. Not exactly, but as bad at the same kind of, like, look he had in the comics, which I don't think really matches up too well. Here's the thing. But I'm okay with it. Here's the thing. is, And I'm trying to think of it. Like, look at these designs that we're all familiar, familiar with in terms of... 80s, 70s, 90s costumes. Oh, the big shoulder pads and the, the really awesome looking he, fucking boots with the giant cuffs on the top. I feel that people miss this point where it's just like, we're going to go see these movies. The demographic that's always pissed off about how a character looks is the demographic of the person of the people that are going to go watch the movie. We don't need them to... We They know we're going to fucking see it. No matter what, we can sit behind a keyboard, we can sit on a message, we can fucking talk on a message board, we can talk at work, be like, oh, he looks so fucking stupid, but we'll be there for day one. It's just like how I feel about Batman, Superman, Deadpool, all, all these movies where we'll, we can bitch about them and complain, but we'll still go see of them. Of course we will. What these costume designs for are, they're trying to pull a fucking mainstream audience to it. And, and I will point this in the direction of Guardians of the Galaxy, where... When that movie came out and everybody's initial reaction was a fucking tree and a talking raccoon? What the? What's, what's the? Fu- I'm not going to go see this shit. It's stupid. It's for kids. And then the more they started showing of Groot and the more they started showing of Rocket and they were like, oh, wait a minute. He's a fucking badass. Look at that tree. He's lovable. He's a lovable fucking thing. And look at this raccoon. He's badass and it's voiced by Bradley Cooper. This is, this is great. Actually, I want to see this. And if you ask most people that, that have seen the Marvel movies that are not hardcore fans like you and I, they will tell you that Guardians of the Galaxy is their favorite fucking Marvel movie. So now, now to relay this by text, man, it's sort of like we're going to look It's Sansa Stark and it's Olivia Munn. You know Olivia Munn, right? We're going to put these people in costumes that are badass and, and kind of like this is the current mold of action movies. You guys are going to go see it. You guys can go fuck off. Enjoy the story. We're bringing one of your favorite characters and come watch. And, and it's the fact. The fact. <laughs> Burf. No, you know, I was doing that. Fishy. Anyway. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. I mean, they have to remember that it's not just the sweatpants nerds that are going to go watch this. It's everybody, all different kinds of people. Um,. Yeah, I mean, but, you, you know, there's going to be criticism no matter what uh, with anything. Um, That's true. Just like, I mean, just look at us. I don't like Spider-Man 2. He loves Spider-Man And I too. don't like Amazing Spider-Man uh, at all. I, I love like, Amazing Spider-Man. I don't like either of those movies. I loved They're it. terrible. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, my bad. God, Peter Parker is a skateboarder. <laughs> okay, <laughs> He's that was so dumb. extreme. I, I, I agree. Oh, look, guys, I'm a ladies' man. No, yeah, Peter Parker is the opposite of that. I know, but it was, outside opposite. of it, it was okay. But that's that defeats the fucking purpose of the character, where it's just this is the maddest you're ever gonna see me get. Where it's just like he's a fucking kid. The 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 whole the whole importance of Spider Man and and the kind of like the tone that Stanley or Dicko for that matter, excuse me, fucking laid out was it's this kid who's a nerd. He's a geek. He's unpopular. Nobody likes him. He's made fun of. It seems like the only two people that love him in the world are his uncle and his aunt. Once taken away, and he's he's a loner and he gets to put on this persona and he becomes this persona that everybody loves and and it's just like you're rooting for him because it's like holy shit here's this one kind of moment of acceptance and with amazing spider-man you feel none of that like that that emotional like attachment that you have to peter parker and to spider-man is just sucked out of this movie which is funny because that's exactly how i felt about the sam raimi spider-man films you felt bad for the fucking I didn't feel bad Toby for him. Maguire. I did not feel bad for Tobey Maguire. Parker! I, and I, I hated his Spider-Man. I thought his Spider-Man was flat and not... I didn't feel that second persona 
I just felt like it was just Tobey Maguire in a costume. Let's hope this floppy British head kid gets the <laughs> gets the next one. No, let's hope this fucking kid does good. Hey, I, I mean, he, he, hey, I mean, Marvel when you're getting they're doing. when you're getting taught by fucking RDJ, you're on, you're on some good terms there. So, uh, Age of Apocalypse. And now we eh, move on to. Meh. I'll go. I'll go. Meh on Age of Apocalypse. Meh? Okay, so thumbs up, thumbs down. You said. Uh, you gotta give one. Thumbs I'm up, thumbs in down. Batman Superman territory. Or I'm like, I gotta see more. Ah, what decision. a wuss! I'm gonna it give it. It seems like this movie's clusterfuck. It looks like three all over again. I'm for gonna me. give it thumbs up. I'm gonna give it thumbs up. You know why? Because I hated it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rain Man. Um. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give it thumbs up only because I'm interested. I liked um, First Class. I enjoyed. I loved First Class and Days of Future Past. Yeah, and Days of Future Past. And you, well, know, you know, honestly, what? the, the like trailer, X1 and X2. the trailer for Days of Future Past, didn't grab me. Like I would have given it a thumbs down, and then I saw the movie. I was still hyped to see it. Went to see it. Still loved it. What did so, the premiere of that? I'm just thinking about that. I went to the premiere of Days of Futures Past. I met Dinklage and all these other people. You jerk. Anyway. I have a picture. I'm like, oh. So, moving on from that, let's move on from Age of Apocalypse Man. to Star Trek. Sabotage! You have to, you have to splicey splice when you say <laughs> Star, Star Trek Beyond. Just go sabotage! <laughs> oh my god. You know, it's it's really weird to hear Beastie Boys in a Star Trek well, movie wait a trailer. Minute. This is the second so, time. Uh, second time what? That they did Beastie Boys in the, in the trailer. This is actually the second time they put Sabotage in a Star Trek movie. Really? Hold on. I'm going to look this up. I don't go rem- on. I don't remember the first. Anyway, so they released the the. Finally, the first trailer for uh, the much talked about Star Trek Beyond, and um, like Mr. Spock, you know, maybe it's it may might be good. Uh, you know, it's funny. I actually went back and watched um, Into Darkness and uh, whatever the first one was called. Um, Just Star Trek, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's so many. There's a scene in, in Into Darkness. After they capture uh, what's his face uh, Khan, and mm-hmm. they're bringing him, you know, through into the ship, and the daughter of the captain looks over. Um, there is such a fucking strong lens flare that you can't even you could barely see her. There's mm-hmm. so much lens flare in the in be in, into darkness. I'm surprised I can visually remember anything uh, from that film. Let's be careful with that, because, you know, there's a Star Wars I know. Up, so. I saw that, and I got really <laughs> scared. I got so fucking scared. There's some lens flare in that trailer. There's a lot of lens flare. I'm okay with but that. But I hate awesome. lens flare, bro. I can't. As a, as a former filmmaker, lens flare, so, dude. I can't deal with that. This is the scene in Star Trek. I think this is when they introduced Kirk and, and won. This is the the scene in in one. Which is pretty funny because, you know. Product placement. Oh jeez. Oh shit, he's right. <laughs> Brendan has a weird mind. That's why I never it never fucking I didn't realize it until now. Yeah, can you please stop that? Yeah, before, before <laughs> for, we get taken down. Yeah, before uh, scary reasons. Um, YouTube no, that's cool. That okay. Well, still, it works in that scene. All right. I'm not sure. First of all, that trailer, trailer. It seems like they just drop you that's into the really middle of the movie, of and it's just like, yeah, Bam, yeah, Star do. Trek, suck my dick, Star Wars. Which is like, guys, 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 <laughs> slow it down. I don't Come think they're on. competing with Star Wars, but oh, they know they've lost. Um, Wait, it, my my shit is that it's um this is why I'm gonna say thumbs three quarters of the way up. <laughs> I'm three quarters of the way. I'm f I am i do not know. It is my my plus minus. Minus James Wan's directing it. He did Furious Seven, which mm-hmm. I like those Fast and the Furious movies. I am not as big of a Star Trek fan as I am Star Wars, so I can understand I can understand the kind of like mm, but it's in good hands of who wrote it. So, 
I'm kind of on that fence. You know, Simon Pegg wrote it. And yeah. I, you know, I have a nerd boner for Simon Pegg that's beyond so, I mean, recognizable. Simon Pegg is going to be the only thing right now that's kind of keeping me interested. Um, I'm not saying I hated the first two. I thought they were, I thought they felt like long episodes, which I like. I, I enjoyed that. Um, I don't know. Is it's hard to say with this trailer for me. How do you feel about the reboot? Uh, the the show that's coming in 2016, 2017. Is so, it going to be based off the uh, the new? I don't know. I think it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna be new continuity, but I know they're doing it. I it's gonna it's be not. digital only. It's oh, CBS's yeah. kind of like testing the waters on digital on distribution. moving towards there, which would be beneficial to them probably. But anyway, um, I, I'm I'm always excited when I read that news that they were coming out with it in um, 2016. But um, I just my question was that really was just whether it's going to follow the same continuity or go based off or just redo the original series with this new like kind of like oh or. This new Star Trek with a whole new timeline, like some alternate universe thing. I would like to see them continue it because I think Star Trek is definitely known and definitely loved because of its deep and long history. Um, with its yeah, with its it's just a huge expanded universe with a whole bunch of different shows, with all the books and even some of the games that kind of build off of it. And seeing them all interconnected and seeing how one story drastically affects the outcome of another story and how this story couldn't even exist without that. So for them to just kind of crush it and start over from the beginning, Mm -hmm. you know, like I said, it it worries me, especially in, in TV show format since Star Trek is a freaking TV show. Movies, I don't give a fuck. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope it's gonna be good. I, I have high hopes. I, I only hope the best for you. And speaking of aliens, one more trailer came out. <laughs> About aliens. Get excited, folks. It's called it's The Finger 20 That years Probed in the making. You. Oh. It's 20 years in the making, but we're getting a second Independence but Day. It may have taken 20 years, but somehow life uh, uh, finds a way. There you go. Oh, come on. I, wanna, I <laughs> love that line. There you go. Uh, and uh, yeah. welcome to Earth. Uh, oh, Robert Loggia was in that. Sad recipe. Robert, Robert Loggia. Uh, so R is for Robert Loggia. O is for Oh my God! It's, it's Robert Loggia. He died last week. Show the man some respect. Oh, he's a cool dude. That was in honor of him. And uh, everybody's coming back except two people. One who's in fucking insane, batshit crazy, and the other, he's going to make concussion movies and Suicide Squad. Tell the truth. <laughs> Sorry, that, that cracks me up in the commercial every time. Um, <laughs> so, Randy Quaid, who's batshit crazy. Randy Quaid. I don't know if you've seen, he like has videos online of him having sex with his wife wearing a Richard Nixon mask. Damn it, Randy Quaid, what are you doing? Randy Quaid is a psycho. And of course, William Smith, the guy from West Philadelphia, who was born and raised. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not coming back. Everybody's coming back. Fucking Vivica Fox. Yep, everybody Paxton. but like, the Smith. Even the old guy that doesn't fucking age. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> on, and Robert Lozier, because... Well, no, because he probably filmed this before he died. Mm-hmm. So probably Robert Lozier is in there, too. Um, no, uh, they actually explain. There's a cool website called The War of 1996 that gives you details. Which of- is freaking awesome. I love when movies do that, when they have like little companion sites mm-hmm. that have nothing... To do with the exact do film, but they just do like these little offshoot things. I love that. Those are always fun. Yeah, they they kind of explain like the storyline, the storyline of what happened afterwards, like the year after they found out that there was more fucking spaceships in hiding. But uh, which so is they- cool because you know, in the trailer you see a lot of this high tech, this new tech that Earth has. I'm getting to that. Okay. Oh. Well, so yeah. they uh, they steal the they get, they get some of the alien technology and they design to make these new ships and planes. So my question to you is: You think they steal the technology because of Will Smith? Get into it. So <laughs> Will Smith steals, uh, not Will Smith, but they take the technology and they make these new like jets out of the, these new fucking aircrafts out of the alien technology. And guess who pilots the first aircraft ever that they make? Mr. William West Philadelphia Smith. And he dies. <laughs> so you got him written out of the movie. Literally on the timeline. It's Isn't like that in sad? 20, yeah. <laughs> 
it's like in 2007, Will, like, uh, whatever his character's name <laughs> in was. In 2007, Will Smith. Will Smith dies. You heard it here, first, folks, for the first time. Our prediction, 2007, Will Smith will die. So, you know, no, that happens. They, uh, they write him out like that. They kill him because he was the first test pilot of these new alien technology. So his son, that's in the movie, is now his character 20 years later. Not played by the same little kid because that guy's yeah. probably in drugs or something. Um, kid actors, man. That's what happens. I so. hope for humanity. They do. I'm going to say yay. Uh, before I say yay, I wanted to say that... Jeff Globe, man. There's a, there's a stark difference, especially... With movies, with sequels that are made like 10, 20 years after the fact, there's a, there's a really big difference between the, the style of filmmaking um, then and now. Independence Day is a movie that is definitely slotted in its time. Mm-hmm. Um, it really feels <laughs> like it was filmed in the 90s. Um, so good, though. And no, it is, it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a bad thing. And the the new film, you know, it it feels like it's a modern film with trace elements of that 90s film. You got to have that 90s camp, though. Which I I love. No, I love it. Because that's kind of what made the film good. And that's why I think some of the the sequels that come out now are kind of big failures because they try to update it completely or start it with a fresh new look with fresh eyes. But it misses the charm. Looking at you, Point Break. I can't Point Break. I think these guys... Are extreme athletes. Anyway, and um, I like that. I, I kind of felt that through the trailer where it's like, oh, you know, they're actually kind of keeping a, a lot of elements. Like some of the, the jokes and the humor with these older actors, um, more seasoned actors, just kind of reprising, reprising their role in the same mindset. It's, it's kind of cool. And um, I have really high hopes for this film. I really, really do. I do too. I want it to succeed. I hope it doesn't get like that kind of stigma because Will Smith's not in it. But I, at the same token, like I, I like it. It's 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 a movie that I enjoyed twenty years. I have really. a feeling I'll, Will Smith I'll, couldn't do it because of suicide. I fucking highly doubt it. I'll never forget that scene where all of like when they strike on Independence Day, and they just fucking blow everything up. And then after nine eleven, they, they 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 didn't they didn't play the movie anymore. What is that awesome explosion scene of the White House? Fucking yeah, which is up, amazing which is looking. Fucking great. Empire State Building gets annihilated. The Capitol Records Building gets annihilated. That dog makes it into the tunnel before the fucking fire can Stupid engulf dog. everybody. Uh-huh. Um, no, I I just I hope we get good things from. I remember they Fox did this really awesome thing for the promotion of that movie during the summer mm-hmm. where they kind of they had like an episode of the Simpsons start and then they did like a fake special report and it cut into like as if it was actually happening and it was awesome. It was like, oh, the Simpsons start and it's like the Sims and then the like everything gets staticky, like sort of like how creepy pasta start. And then all of a sudden it was like Fox, but freaking special news and i was like oh shit and as a kid i thought this was real i'm like oh something, <laughs> something's happening and then there were like reports of aliens outside of los angeles and i was like oh shit that's intense oh shit and uh she's gone went, crazy yeah no it was fucking great man and again this kind of goes with the marketing for this movie i hope it does good mm-hmm. and we'll probably be the only two people to talk in great life about the second independence i know trailer. right we, who thought that we would talk more about well, that than all the others even crazier, real quick. <laughs> when I went to go see what fucking movie did I see this year on New Year's on, on New Year's on Fourth of July? I think I went to go see Jurassic World, and they uh, there was a trailer for what's the stupid movie Spy started it, and and I was like Spy that shit came out like two months ago. Why is there why is there trailers for this movie? And all of a sudden, in the middle of Spy, cuts in the teaser for Independence Day. True, and I was like. Fucking great marketing. Bam. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, um, I think with that, we are coming to a close. Um, we're, we're forgetting one great alien discussion. Alien discussion? In a, in a galaxy far, far away. Well, I was going to say. Yep. Um, so, as you know, we're going Message. to see uh, Star Trek. I mean, Star Trek. Star Wars. Wow. Some nerd just, like, cocked his gun. Um, oh, man. Star Wars. I can't wait. Came out. As, a, as you linked to me, as you linked to me, the uh, Chrome app that allows you to 
or Chrome extension that allows you to block anything Star Wars related so you don't get spoily spoilers. That's fucking amazing. Shout out to Google Chrome for that. Um, yeah, guys, if you haven't, uh, if you're on a media blackout like us, then we'll see you after the film. But yeah, spoilers abound. Be careful out there. And I hope everybody's uh, everybody who has a ticket at least gets to enjoy the film. Can this I talk weekend. to talk to you time about real quick? I'm just oh, looking at boy. L.A. Times, and it's 46 degrees in L.A. What was it? We're at 28 minutes. Okay. <laughs> real quick, I just gonna, two seconds. It's fucking 46 degrees in L.A. It's been 60 here every day. The yeah, last that's fucking weeks. that's weird. Day after tomorrow, and we'll be back. <laughs> We're not gonna be back. This is it? <laughs> oh, cool. So how much time do we have left? Huh? How much time do we have? Like Talk a minute. So what? Like a minute. Stay tuned for our special edition Star Wars episode coming tomorrow. Well, it's not coming tomorrow, but we are we have something planned for the fucking marathon. Well, at least I'm going to try to put some effort into this. I what is that supposed to mean? No, no. I'm saying like, you know, we had the plan for Comic-Con and then I shot the bet on that. So I'm going to say that we're going to, we have something kind of cool and special that we'll just add on to that. It's going to be a sound bite of us masturbating as we watch the film. You know, um, get if probably, hopefully if nobody shoots it up. Um, oh, could you not say that? <laughs> Jesus. Why would you even like think that's a good, a good thing to say? Because somebody's going to spoil the movie and send us into a blind rage. Ah. Oh. There's a lot of fears are going into tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think in our spoiler heads right now. is like all the way up here. Active shooter is like all the way down there. You, uh, you keep saying the words. <laughs> Sorry. But you put it uh, out there. Now look, now someone just triggered. Someone just like switched on. Like dude, a I'm pretty CIA sure there's spot, a lot like, of secret like, agent. Psychopaths have had this fucking day circled on their calendar, and somewhere <laughs> in West Virginia, we're gonna hear like a movie theater get shot. Ah, uh, you know how depressing that's gonna be. Yeah, if we hear on the news. So what, what should be a happy day for Star Wars fans <laughs> the turned into is white a tragedy. And mentally ill, because you know. You oh yeah, know. he's mentally ill. Yeah, because yeah. you gotta you gotta care for him. I know. All, all jokes aside, guys, we're excited. We have some great shit planned for for that event. Um, good shit. The good shit. Yeah. No. Um, I hope it all goes well. Hopefully, so, Jimmy comes through. So with that, um, I am Stefan. Hey guys, I be Brendan. And uh, you know. Don't forget to uh, punch back in. Sabotage! <laughs> Joy DMX. Listen, but do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Come on! Put off the red nose reindeer out of every shiny nose. Uh, and if you ever saw him, you would even say it close. Come on!